Resident Evil Deadly Silence is a remake of the 1996 classic from Capcom. It's the game that originally coined the phrase survival horror and, as a matter of fact, it happens to stand up pretty well to today's standards as far as generating a lot of creepy atmospheric moments. Even though you're playing it now just in the palm of your hand, for the most part looking at just the bottom screen where all this cinematic action takes place. The game's got a premise straight out of a horror movie. As a member of the Elite Stars Alpha team, you're sent in to rescue the Bravo team, which went radio silent for some strange reason while they were investigating a disturbance in this old creepy mansion. But pretty much the moment you land, things go bad, weird monsters attack, and you're cut off. Basically, so now you're searching for survivors, trying to regroup with your team, and get out alive. One of the cool things about Resident Evil DS is that it actually pulls in all the really bad voiceover and really bad full motion video from the 1996 original. Kenneth was killed too, maybe by this creature. So it really sounds like this uh, awful B movie at first. It'll make you laugh just how bad some of the dialogue is. At the same time though, the actual story of the game is pretty serious and it starts to become pretty engaging once you start to realize what's really going on in this mansion. So the story definitely keeps you going and the whole game is made up to be this sort of cinematic presentation. It's got these weird camera angles uh, and, and really it builds a lot of tension and suspense as you're fighting your way through this mansion trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. For the most part, Resident Evil DS is just a straight port of the original game, so all the content from the original game is in here. But the game has both what's called the classic mode, which is just a remake of the original, and the rebirth mode, which is a souped up, slightly more action-packed version of the original game that also incorporates a bunch of little cool uh, DS-specific features. So you'll get to use the touchscreen to knife zombies, coming at you from a first-person perspective. You'll have to blow into the microphone at a few certain occasions and use the touchscreen to solve a bunch of new puzzles. This stuff feels pretty tacked on and a little gimmicky, but it's actually pretty cool. It, it really adds to the original game in a decent way. On top of that, you've got two different playable characters, so the game takes about six or seven hours to finish the first time through, so when you add it all up, there's actually quite a bit of lasting value here, and that's not even accounting for the four-player multiplayer mode that's also in there. As for the multiplayer, there's both a cooperative and a competitive mode, but in both cases you don't actually see the other players on the screen. They're just represented by these big uh, colored stars. So in the competitive mode, you're just trying to race the other player to the exit, whereas in the cooperative mode, you're trying to help each other get there. It's, it's kind of a neat diversion, but unless you know other people who've got this game and unless you're willing to get past the fact that you don't actually see the other guys running around with you on screen, it's not necessarily all that engaging. One of the differences about Resident Evil DS compared with the original is that it doesn't necessarily look quite as good. The graphics do look a little washed out and take some getting used to, and there isn't quite as much detail as you'd ideally want to see. At the same time, the controls take some getting used to as well. The Resident Evil series is notorious for having characters that control like tanks, in that you push up to make your character move forward and you kind of turn left and right. It feels a little clunky at first and definitely takes a little while to get up to speed. Ultimately though, this system does work well because it helps keep you oriented even when the camera angles are changing around on you. The other thing that helps you to really navigate around the environment is actually the game's sound. The sound effects are really excellent for the most part and the stereo separation on the DS even makes it easy to tell where some of your enemies are coming from even when you don't see them on screen. It's pretty amazing that 10 years after Resident Evil first came out, the game's still pretty suspenseful and, and just pretty gory. You get to do a lot of cool stuff like blow zombies' heads off and squish giant spider babies and fight crazy zombie dogs and stuff like that. And These monsters are still pretty iconic. There's a lot to see and do in Resident Evil DS and that's one of the great things about it. The game is easy to recommend both to old and new Resident Evil fans. Uh, th those of us who really got into the series with last year's Resident Evil 4 might well want to play this game just to see what all the fuss was originally about and see how the story all started out. At the same time, if you're a diehard of the old game, you're probably going to appreciate some of the new nuances that are introduced by the Rebirth mode, and plus, just having this game in the palm of your hand is, is just uh, pretty mind-blowing in its own right. It's really uh, one of the first and only times that the idea of a horror game has been executed well uh, in the palm of your hand in, in this portable package. So uh, it's pretty novel being able to play this game wherever you want and kill the lights and, and start getting scared blasting zombies.